All right, Ozonics Killer Wins Podcast back again. I'm Cole Tanner. I'm Nick Simon. And we have got a special <laughs> guest today. It's me, Jet. Yep, we've got my little boy, Jet Kodiak. He's in studio with <laughs> us today. Yeah. Thanks for being here, buddy. You're welcome. How'd you get here? I just wanted to come and see if... The, because I shot, a couple, I shot a deer like a couple days ago. Oh, jeez. Look at... Guess who's calling me? Who? Mom. I better answer. She's FaceTiming me. Hold on a second. Yeah. All right. So we are back at it. We had a little interruption there. Yeah. Mom calling. Yeah. <laughs> She's really something else, isn't yeah. she? She's pretty good egg, though, isn't she? Yeah. Yep. So what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking everything youth hunting. Yep. Yep. So, Jetty, you just got done with your youth season. You had a pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting hunt. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah, pretty exciting one. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, so before we kind of get into that, that's kind of the really, one of the really awesome things about youth hunting in Iowa, which I know you growing up, it was yeah. a bit different than this. Now yeah. I think they've changed that law. Yeah. But in Iowa, um, you can start hunting at basically any age. They just have to be with a licensed adult. Right, right. And... And now that's how Wisconsin is, but it wasn't like that for years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like when I was growing up, you had to be 12, mm -hmm. which is crazy to think about because he's six and he's already got a couple under his belt. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, he's got, he's six. How many turkeys have you shot, Jetty? Six. You shot, shot six turkeys. Yep. Yep. Over the last three seasons, right? Yeah. Two per season. Yep. Yep. All big old Tommies too. Yeah. Man, those Tommies almost probably weigh about as much as you do. I tried carrying them. <laughs> They're really heavy. Dad has that picture. Yeah, it's you do. really heavy. You try carrying them and it doesn't work very good. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have to carry them. It's like carrying a tr like it's carrying like bow. It's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough. They're big. Yeah. Yeah, and then this last year, you started. We took you. Youth deer hunting. Yep. You were pretty adamant. You shot all these turkeys, but you yeah. really wanted to shoot a deer. Yeah. I've been hoping to shoot one. Yeah. I'm like, eh, let's just pass on. Yeah, let's, let's try to go deer hunting. Let's try something something more. Yeah. Yep. Turkeys so, are good, but not that good. They're pretty fun, though. Yeah. I like turkey hunting. Yeah, I like turkey hunting. It's pretty it's, fun, but I just want to try something new. Yep. It's really fun hearing them, hearing them gobble, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So this year, excuse me, last year, yep. we went youth hunting. Yep. Yep. And talk to me a little bit about how that hunt went. What ended up happening? We had gone a few times, hadn't we? So this is only spot, like in Mason, where no one goes. So we have like one, two. What's that? Bump him up we just got, a little bit. Okay. We, we got, got two. We got Two, we got two, does it, two tree stands in that field? Yeah, we got a couple tree stands down in there. And then we went hunting, like, on this side where there's a big hill. Then right when we left, Dad had everything down, everything. No bolts on the gun, gun dropped right over here. And then Dad looks up and he sees two earlings in window walking down. Then Dad is like, hey, Dad, come on. I was freaking out, wasn't I? Yeah, he was like freaking out. <laughs> yeah, I was freaking out because because we were sitting in this bottom cornfield. There was a river and there was a big hillside, and I had we had a cell camera down in there, yeah. didn't we? And we had a big doe with two yearlings walking down that yeah. tree line. And then Dad had to reload the gun. Yep. Which was super embarrassing with the deer walking out. We had to load it like. Ch -ch -ch oh yeah. Uh, so we shoot. Yep. So we shoot a lever action, don't we? Yeah. Yep. And I had the blind set up. <laughs> And I told him, I said, and it was a it was a school day and a work day. <laughs> and so, then I had to pull the gun up in there. I had no rest, so I just had to lay on the... I Wait, Dad, was there a tripod or did I have to go on nope, the No, so what we did is is I had the blind all set up, and then I thought, okay, 9 o'clock is going to be our number, and then that's when we're going to have to leave, right? Yep. And it was 9 o'clock, and I'm like, God. Oh. So I'm like reluctantly like, i got to get to work. He's got to get to school, you know. <laughs> so I tear everything down, tear the blind down. Put everything on the backpack, the gun, the tripod, everything, and we're all ready sitting there. 
getting everything squared away. I look up and here comes that big doe with those two yearlings yeah. walking down that fence line. <laughs> so, or the tree line. So I'm freaking out. I'm jumping around, grabbing stuff. I just literally sit, I just sit down on the grass. I just put him on, t- on my lap. I stick yeah, up the tripod. Yeah, he sets his gun... He sets his hand on, and then I just aim my gun like this. And then he's going to be my tripod. Yep. And with that, that, and I would just go. Yep. And he's like, and he's like, Chet, can you see the deer? <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, no, I can't see him. Until I look over, and I see this big white body standing there, and I'm like, what's that? And he's like, that's the deer. Yeah. And then and he, he, he was walking right, she was walking right down that tree line. But we shot her facing. We didn't shoot her broadside. We shot her this way. Not a little quartering, too. Yeah, a yep. little quartering. Yep. Too. And so I told you, I said, just aim, go right up that leg, right on the shoulder. And then I macked at her, didn't I? I went, eh. Yeah. Didn't and I? And I went, Phew. Yep. And I said, and then it's, it's an, it's, it is an odd feeling when you're, you're, you're trying to help the best you can and mm-hmm. he's behind the gun and everything. And then you just have to, go, you know, you're kind of like, okay. And I'm like, do you see him? And she's like, he's like, no, no. And then I'm like, do you see him? And I'm like, she's going to walk right in this window. And then finally she stepped right in there. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, okay, Jetty, it's all on you. Dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, Whenever exactly. you're ready, like whenever you're ready and you settled in real good and you waited like a couple seconds <laughs> and you shot, didn't you? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> you pay later, didn't you? Yeah. She ran, she actually ran right at us. She ran right by us at like 30, 40 yards. Well, yeah. the two yearlings are just standing there like, What's going what's on? Going on? Oh, what's yeah. going on? And then the wait, remember the last year when I shot my turkey and the, those two hens are like, okay, I'm just gonna walk out of here. They're like, fly. They're like, oh. Yep. They just didn't know what to do either. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yeah, so you did pretty good that day on you did really good that day on that dough. You that was your yeah. first dough, and that was a big dough, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really big. Dad had a hard time trying to get it on that wheel thing. He yeah, had so, a hard time. So I, I use a cart. Yeah. And my brother-in-law, Justin, had the idea, he said, and there's actually a tannery not too far from here. Um, it's like, oh, you know what we should do? We should get the hides tanned. That would be kind of neat. Well, with that said, her hide was perf, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, well, let's be really careful. Yeah. So I'm loading on the card. I'm trying not to let it get rubbed and try not to get let it get wedged between like the straps and the bars and the wheels. And it's like, and I was having a heck of a time. Yeah. Because usually I just kind of throw them on there and, Bob, let's go. Yeah. And this time I'm like really being careful trying to ratchet her down or like tie her off the best I can. Yeah. And oh, it was just an absolute right. nightmare. But we got her out of there, didn't we? Yeah, there was there was like a hole this into my rug what they made. Yep. It was like this big of a hole in there. Yep. And there's this like a little hole. Yep, yep. From the for where I shot. Yep. Just yeah. a couple of holes in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then this year. So then that was last last fall you shot your first year. Yep. Then this last spring you shot a couple more turkeys. Yep. And then this fall, just last week, you shot your second deer. Which was a little button buck. A little button buck, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we went out, and that's kind of the cool thing, and that's kind of what we're here to talk about today is, is Nick came with us, and he filmed the whole thing, didn't he? Yeah. We were on a mission to try to get it on video. Yep. Yep. And it's actually been kind of tough hunting. You yeah. Know, it's, it's been kind of hot. Right. It's October. Yeah, exactly. It's end of September. Early, yeah, you know, September and, when we were going with him. Yes. And end of September, first part of October. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's been hot now in October, the U season in September. Yeah. And it's just been, it's just hard. Yeah. You know, the leaves are all green. There's a lot of foliage. Yeah. You know, it's just a little bit tricky. Yeah. Crops are a little bit different this year too. Yep, which yep. kind of makes it tougher for your spot. Yeah, as like well. everything's drying out a bit more, yeah. and then we've got a lot more corn. Where I yeah. usually pay lay them on the beans yep. on certain years. Yep, and so we're having to get a little bit creative. We got out a couple times. Yeah, and then Nick and I were in Montana elk hunting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then you went with you went with Uncle Justin. Yeah, and you helped Marshall get his deer. But and then Justin asked me, "Hey, Jack." Did you bring your deer license? And I'm like, Mom said, oh, I just think it's going to be Marshall. And then, he, then he grabbed my bag and he started digging it. He's like, where are those deer licenses? Yeah, you didn't have your deer tag with you. But there was two, and I could have shot the other one, but that was okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. I was going to go on another hunt with Y, but he wanted to go with his grandpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we decided we were going to try a spot actually in the woods. Yeah. 
you know, it was a spot where we had, it was a west wind that day. Yep. So it was straight west. Yep. So we were sitting in the stand facing south. The wind was blowing from right to left. Yep. And we were hoping that the deer were just going to kind of walk through that track of timber right there, either coming from the south to north or the north to south. And if they got on the downwind side, we had our HR 500s running. Yep. And hopefully we were going to be able to pay land by that. Exactly. Yep. And we were sitting there getting all set up and it's tricky, right? We're in a double tree stand. <laughs> and then we've got Nick above us in the tree stand. Yeah. Didn't we? He was sitting right above me. I was sitting there and I'm like, I told you, I said, don't move or you're going to get muddled down, <laughs> know, my, I'm trying down not, the back of my neck. I'm trying not to move my feet because I know he's just going to get showered with mud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we're watching real good, weren't we? Yeah. And then what happened? Nick spotted one. Didn't he? He oh. spotted, wait, was it three? A two. There was two. two. It was okay. a doe, and the and it's and it's yearling little button buck. Yep. And they came in from behind us, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, it actually probably worked out pretty good that I was up there because, I mean, they were moving slow and quiet. Yes. And it, with the way I was set up in the stand, I could look behind you guys really easily. Yes. You know, I mean, odds are you probably will have still got a shot, but just to know where they are earlier is pretty huge. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, for whatever reason, every year i feel like i'm just amazed by deer elk whatever animal it is it's just yeah. unbelievable that the instincts that they use there's just a little bit of a roll yeah on that little ridge yep right like there's the ridge obviously but there's a little bit of a contour yeah and those deer will come across that ridge and you could see her just look yeah over the top well yeah and that's and that's the thing and that's too. exactly what she did you when you said deer i looked and all i could kind of see was yeah. her head yeah. i couldn't even see her because there was a tree right on her vitals like, yes. could you see it no well no i could see it pretty good yeah like here's her vitals and i'm like no i cannot make that shot <laughs> until she walked away and i'm like no yeah and so then, the, so then the deer started to come towards us right yeah and so nick's i'm like nick's like he's on him yeah right but you're above, you're above, you're he, you're above us a bit, and yeah. I'm trying to get around the tree this way. Well, we were kind of planning on a shot straight out in front of us. Well, now all of a sudden we're shooting completely behind us. Right. And Dad did that call again to stop that doe. Yep. And then she stopped right by a tree. Yep. So she walks in, and then I and get you on the gun, and and I, you're on the gun, and you can see her. Yeah, but I but and I, I looked, ma- and I'm like, no. Yeah, and I macked at her just to stop her, and she stopped of course, and she stops right behind a tree. Yeah. Yeah, and then. And then she ran really slow like that deer walk. Yeah, she and kind then, of stepped forward a little bit. Yeah, until that other, until that button buck came, and then Dad's like, okay, and then he, then he calls out the other one, then he stops, and then I take my time and I just bang. Yep, well, and it's, I think, I mean. You did such a good job, buddy. Yeah, you yeah. did do a really good job. Dude, I was, I was very impressed. I did. Um, Talk about Mr. Clutch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on there. And yeah. what I was going to say earlier is it's like um, the way we were set up, like I wasn't really sure which deer he was going to shoot because yeah. the first time when you stopped stopped the doe, I couldn't see her either. Yeah. But when you stopped her, the button buck stopped too, just perfect for me. Like, oh, he's going to shoot that one. And then just nothing happened, nothing happened. I'm like, oh, he must not be able to see that one. And then worked out really well that, that buck kind of, or the button buck came up and stopped for both of us. So yes. it all worked out really good, but it was kind of hard communicating because like we talked about in the last podcast, like from the cameraman and the hunter, you're kind of always talking and mm-hmm. working through some stuff. But in that situation, it just, it wouldn't have worked out because we were too far away and you were really focused on jet and, yep. but no, it worked out really, really awesome. And it was a really fun morning and I was glad I got to be a part of it. It yeah. was awesome. Dad was like... The gun was on, that was here, and then this was me, and then the gun was hooked right here, and then he had to go on top of here, and then grab the gun, then he came over to my side, yep. then he had this, because the tripod wouldn't fit, and he was like, Jet, shoot that doe, and I'm like, no, 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 yep. until uh, that button, do she walks through, and then that button buck walks right where she was, mm-hmm. and then you, then you did the call, yep. and then... On. Yep, and and we've what do we talk a lot about, right? You will always want to shoot them right behind yeah. the shoulder, and if you can't see that right behind the shoulder, don't shoot, right? Yeah. yeah, and that's exactly what you did because she came out when she stopped. She stopped right behind that tree, and you said, "You go, I can't see her shoulder. I can't see behind her shoulder." 
you didn't shoot, did you? You did a good yeah, job. I'm like, like, get off sight. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Until that guy walks in. And then when I heard you do that call, I'm like, and then I hear you say, Jack, get on the gun. Then I go on and I see this guy just standing there. And yeah. I'm like, Phew. You made a great shot. Yeah. I mean, you just, that was, that was definition smoke city. Yeah. Yeah, really good shot. And it was crazy, too, just like you talked about. We were facing the other way. Mm -hmm. I had the tripod up there, and then all of a sudden when they're in behind us, it's like trying to grab the gun. Okay, and the tripod's not going to work, so I'm turning it over this way. Yeah. And then I had my hand underneath of it at first. I was like, okay, I'll steady it that way, and I'm kind of trying to stay out of the way. And then that really wasn't working, so I just kind of set the gun right on the rail. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, dude. And he was on it, you know, yeah. and, and, and then pull the lever back, and here we go. Yep. We had... That year, when Crider entrance, like we thought we almost lost it in the in that toll leaves, we thought we almost lost it because we had a blood trail. Yep. And then so we then, then we found, then we actually thought she went straight, but she actually turned around, went this way. And then we saw her go through some trees, tripped over something, and then died. Yeah. So that it was, was a big... really far. Yeah. Yeah, she she probably he shot her about sixty yards away, mm -hmm. and she probably only went about a hundred yards. Yeah, I mean we got we we so the big thing you always do too, Jenny, right? We talk about is after you yeah. shoot, you always give them a little time. And Dad was like Matt. He was like, no, he did not want me to shoot this way. He wanted me to shoot it broadside, not this way. Yep, you always shoot them broadside. We don't want to shoot them when they're facing us, right? Because yeah. that's a really tough shot. You always want to take what we taught. We like to call it a high percentage shot which means are a high opportunity. So that's why it means we either shoot them broadside like this or we shoot them quartering away with their heads right here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. So here's broadside and here's quartering away, but we don't want to shoot them when they're facing us, do we? Yeah. That's a tough angle. Well, Sometimes you can shoot them a little quartering too, but if, with a gun, especially if you can hit them in the shoulder, right? Yeah. That's like, what you did last year. Like last year, remember that time when Marshall was going in that tall tree stand? Yep. Our cousins have a tall tree They've stand. They've got an elevated blind. Oh, okay. And then yep. he hunted in there. He had his gun up, and then he shot that one. And then there was one behind us. My dad thought he was still there till he got gone. Then he, and then Justin saw some more. And he's like, oh, okay, we might be able to shoot. Till they came this way. Yep. And then they ran away until... Our cousin, it was in tall grass. Yep. And then we found no blood, not even a single drip. And yep. So Marshall shot at a deer, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. He shot at a deer, and it was standing broadside, and it stopped. And Justin got him on it, and Marshall's ready, and so Marshall shot, and he pretty sure he missed, didn't he? Because we yeah. gave it some time. Then we got down, and we snuck over there, and we looked in the grass right where he shot. We started to look around. We didn't find any blood. We stood there no for hair, like an no hour. Yep. We searched all over the glass until Dad found a fresh track yep. with no blood. Nothing. Not even by the grass beside it. None. Nothing. We searched and searched and searched, and that's what you got to do, don't you? Wait, was it? That was like, that was like a little buck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so then we got all we got all our stuff gathered up after you shot. Got all the camera gear <laughs> squared away and got all the stuff out and got out of the tree stand. And Jetty was carrying the GoPro. He had a little Jetty cam, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. And so we went over to where you shot it. And right away, not too long after, there was, she really, that little button buck really laid out the red carpet. Yeah. And, he like. Yep. And so Jet started blood trailing it and you walked down yeah. through the woods. You went probably about a hundred yards and there, yeah. he, and there he was. Yeah. All piled up. Yeah. Yep. And where'd you, where'd you hit him at? Right, right, right in the vitals. Yep, right in the vitals, right behind the shoulder. Yep. Didn't you? You hit him real good. Yep. Yep, that was pretty awesome. We revealed the footage on the camera, and we could see the bullet hit it. We could see it bounce. You could just see it just... Mm -hmm. Just pale. And we could see him turn, and he would... Yep, and they try to get out of there pretty fast, don't they? Yeah. When they get shot, they kind of act like they're on fire, and they run away. Yeah, well, Last time, my dad shot a big 10-pointer, mm -hmm. and then no blood, not even a single drip. And right. when we came back with my butt, button buck, Nick smelled something, and then dad's like, 
hey, that might have been my deer. Yeah. And then we looked all over, we looked all over, we looked all over until that gets really closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. They finally finds it yep. with its, we thought it was a nine-pointer because there was a little baby horn sticking out of it. Yep. And yep. then then Dad cut off the head with all kinds of bugs and everything, mm-hmm. and then we get to the DNR. Yep. So what Jet's talking about is I do some depredation hunting. And the depredation hunting that I do in the summertime, they're like, they're shooting permits. Mm -hmm. Within that shooting permit, you can shoot any weapon and you can shoot any deer. Well, what I was kind of told in the way I do it is I don't discriminate. Whatever deer walks out, that's the deer that I shoot. So Jet and I had been hunting in these, in this bean field right off the road. And uh, we call it the road field (laughs) (laughs) conveniently. And we have a double set in there. And we actually have sat there a couple of times and, you know, we just seen if we can get lucky. So... That day we had, uh, I think it was in like a like a northeast wind or something. Usually I try to set that on like a north yeah. wind because you can yep. get away with it pretty good. So Jet and I sneak out there. I mean, we snuck out there through this bean field, like real quiet, walking yeah. through the field. Yeah, really and quiet. Wait, are you talking about the ten pointer or that little buck? We're ta- I'm talking about the ten pointer. Oh, so we snuck right. By- we stuck oh, right by it, didn't we? And then we climbed up, climbed up, <laughs> climbed up, and then Dad sees this deer just standing up in the field. Yeah. And so he's we, like, oh, that's a big buck. So we literally sneak right past this deer, get in the tree stand, and Jet's kind of, you know, he's kind of complaining a little bit. And, and I'm watching a blue vlog video, and yeah, then I'm like... He's watching YouTube on my phone, <laughs> and all of a sudden, probably about 45 minutes goes by, and I look over, and this buck just stands up out of the beans, just like stretching its legs, And you then know? same thing after that, the first time... Yep. We snuck right by a little buck, and then we just climbed up there, and Dad sees this little buck. He sh- that was with was that with the gun or a bow and arrow? That was with the gun. You're getting the, you're getting ahead of me on the story. It stories, was over buddy. here, but <laughs> the big buck was over here, yep. and the little buck was over here. Yep. And Dad, Dad was worried that because there's a fence, and he would get worried if he would jump over the fence. Until he stopped, and Dad took a shot, and then he's like, I don't know if he's dead. They takes another one, they takes another one, and then there goes another, a, a rifle bullet. Yep. And then, boom, we walk over there, and we see a big pile of blood, and then, then we see him down. Yep. So the first story, so that deer stands up, and it just started to kind of, you know, just it actually stood up, then it laid back down. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, it's there. And then it stood up. And then it was just like, okay, I'm going to walk this way. And so it started to walk. Well, it was walking dead straight away from me. I mean, dead straight away. I'm like, come on, guy. Yeah. Which I get it, right? And so he's like walking away, walking away. Well, then he finally starts, he turns quartering away and he stops. Well, the beans are super tall. Right. You know what I mean? This is before we went to Montana. Yeah. So this is like still the depredation season, whatever you want to yeah, call exactly. it. exactly. You know, like, because that goes till, they go until like October 1st. Right. But it's like, you know, early September, yeah. mid-September. One sec, buddy. Go ahead. Like, we, the weapons we've been using are shotguns and rifles. Yes, yep. yep. Not, we only use rifles for deer, but we use shotguns for turkeys. Yes. Like, all the time. Yes, that's right, exactly. We'll we, get into that. We only, last year, my sixth turkey, we used, what gun was that? It was a 410. We, we usually use, like... A 20 gauge. Yeah, 20 gauge, but that was a 410. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it was green, and we just got that, like, wood and brown, but all the time for turkey hunting, but that was that one was green. Yes, that's right. We always use that, the brown guns. My dad just thinks it's really cool. Mm-hmm, I do. So then, so then that deer finally turns a little bit, courting away. I'm like, and he stops. I'm like, tall beans. I'm like, okay, I'm going to really hug it the best I can. Yeah. And I shot, and I thought, I thought when I shot, I thought I hit it. You know what I mean? But we walk over there. We gave it some time, and it's hot, hot, you know? And so I gave it probably an hour. We got down, walked across the field, and I knew right where it was. I couldn't find nothing. Not a lick. It Mm -hmm. was right in the middle of the field, and then I asked my dad, shoot it in the head. And then later when he (laughs) comes over there, he's like, Oh, I should have shot him in the head. No, I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, you you're, did. You you're making that? that. You're making that part up. I would never shoot him in the head, Jetty. That's not what we do. We shoot him in the vitals. Why do you shoot turkeys in the head? 
Well, that's true. You can shoot turkeys in the head. Why you do you do? You don't shoot deer in the head, buddy, because turkeys you're using a you're using turkey shot. It's like it's all these BBs that spread out. You can hit them in the head, but not with a not with a How about rifle. If you shoot a deer you, in the nose, see, you think you can do that because on some of your video games you can shoot them in the head. That's why you're saying that. I don't have video games. You have video games on your iPad. Yeah, but they are hunting ones. Okay, let me get back to my story. So then, I didn't. I thought I hit it, but I got over there. I couldn't find a lick of nothing. So we walked off that ridge, like the field goes into the Soul Ravine, and I tromped all over that dang thing, and I couldn't find it. Yeah. And I was like, and literally, I think the next day or the day after, we were leaving for Montana. I think it was the next day. Yeah, I think or, it was actually. Yeah, because it was like it was, right. It was right in there. Yeah, time. it was right in there. I was like, okay, like it was like we're gonna go this tonight, and then if we can get lucky, we're leaving in the morning. Mm-hmm. Or I think that's what it was. Anyway, and so I couldn't find it. So I'm like, well, I mean. Honestly, I'm like, well, and I thought, I guess maybe I missed it. You know what I mean? Because I didn't find anything for nothing. And I was telling Dad, hey, i seen these on videos. There's no blood. You must have shot him in the wrong spot, like in the back way because, or in the head because you must have shot him in a spot where there's no blood. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and I kept on telling him that over and over and over and over. And he's like, Chad, I might have missed him. Yep. Well, so we went round and round. So we backed out. We got out of there. Went to Montana, came back, started youth hunting. We shoot this button buck. We're walking back to the truck, and it was that west wind. Yeah. And we were on the east side of that ravine, and yep. we hit a wall yeah. of just stink. something dead. Yeah. Stink, 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 stink. It smelled like a skunk. Oh, it smelled terrible. Yeah. When we and I got said it. right away, didn't I? I said, I bet, the, I bet you that's that buck. Yeah. And when we... Sm- when when we found it, it smelled. I literally backed away. I could not believe my eyes. I'm oh, it like, smelled eh. terrible. Yeah, it was bad. It smelled terrible. So we go to the truck, drop off the button bucket, all that squared away, and it was only a couple hundred yards back to where we smelled the stink, and we just started tromping around. And I was getting cut, cockaboos, because I was getting lost because... Jetty has a way of finding anything that will stick to him. Yeah. I'll yes. never forget the first time I took you turkey hunting, Jetty. Yeah. I remember you got out of the truck and you just went over to this big brush pile and you just jumped in it. Yeah, and I remember when oh. I found Dad's bow and arrow. I remember when I, when I found a turkey behind us and Dad didn't even know that. So yeah. I let him shoot it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I can smell or see, I just go right towards it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Jetty. So then we walk in there, we walk down that ravine, we start looking, 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 and sure enough, we find that deer. Yeah. And it was him 100%. He was a nine pointer. You could tell because he had a little sticker on his left side yeah. on his main beam that made him the nine. Then mm-hmm. that's like, okay, that has to be him. Yep. And literally, he was so, because you know, eaten up and rotted that, I we, mean, it, and it had been hot. When yeah. we that tried. Literally, we, you could just take the skull. And I mean, it, his skull was clean. There was no. The brain in his skull was gone. Yeah. The maggots and bugs had just really, really done their yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Like, when, like, it was that exactly the spot. There was a big metal piece when we tried to get it. And then we exactly found that. We just see that buck just curled up in a mud spot. Mm-hmm. Well, that was actually decomposing. That was the mud spot. Yeah. Yeah, it was nasty. You just take the head and just pull it out, and it just it just came right off. Yeah. Dad just it tried to disgusting. do his, like, lines coming out of his head, and Dad just had his, knife. like, a knife and just cutting it up. And he's yeah, it's going to make me gag. And then he it. just oh. tags it and tags it. Yep, so it was pretty gross. But yeah, I had the depredation tag, so we tagged it up and yep. did the harvest registration. And then with that depredation stuff, I have to take it to a DNR office, and then yep. they confiscate the horns. Yep. And then uh, they, I think they burn them, for what I understand, or yeah. they get rid of them, confisc- do whatever they do. Right. But we had been out there earlier this summer and had a little basket rack that, same thing, bedded out in the middle of that field, came across, and I shot it. I shot it, and then it ran over towards the fence, which I had permission for all that. It was right near the fence, and I shot it again and dumped right. it. The yeah. field we, we, what's the field? Like, my sixth turkey field was pretty, it was pretty awesome. Like, <laughs> this, yeah. like the turkey when I shot, he got beat up and then flew up into the tall tree, like really tall. 
Then me and my dad are just sitting there looking at my other binoculars, just waiting for him to come down. And finally, he sees two hens just calling up, and then he flies down and joins them. And then they walk over by the decoys, and then dad looks and sees the tom running in. Yes. And then when dad, then I see the tom facing directly towards me. And then when he says, Jet, pull you go whenever you're ready. Pew! Just demolished him. Look at that, Jetty. Just cherry picked him, huh? I cherry picked him. Hey, good job, buddy. Thanks. Are you well, happy? Well, anyway, thanks for taking me to this spot. <laughs> that was probably one of the oddest things I've ever experienced turkey hunting. You feel like when you're turkey hunting, you turkey hunt for a while, you kind of feel like you've seen everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, oh, this is kind of how this is going to go. That was the craziest morning. We're anyway. sitting in there. The turkeys are gobbling real good right out in front of us, right across the way. They're just gobbling like crazy, weren't they, Jet? Yeah. And yeah. That, our fifth turkey. Hold on a second. Let me tell, let me, let me, Wait. let's get, let's tell, let's tell the rest of this. So this turkey's out there. They're, these toms are out there. They're just gobbling like crazy. Well, we hear them come down. Then they're on the ground gobbling. And then all of a sudden you can hear them. You could just see glances of them. They're fighting. I mean, they're getting after it, right? Mm -hmm. They're really, really going. I mean, you can tell they are fighting. They are curling necks and they're just going berserko yeah and all of a sudden one of the two you could tell he was like okay i'm done with this he got his butt kicked yeah well dude instead of just running away he flies up in the air and he goes and roosts up in the tree he goes for like an hour as high as he possibly could in this tree i'm like how are you even up there <laughs> like that i mean there was hardly even like a horizontal branch yeah and he's just sitting on this this limb Way at the top. Well, we're sitting there in the field with the ground blind, the decoys, and there's these hens off to our right. <laughs> and I'm like, well, he can definitely see the setup. I'm yeah, like, exactly. he's like looking down. Yeah. And then he's set up there forever. It's totally light out. It's like, what Dad are you has doing? this thing it, when you pull the string, it makes a turkey move. And then he kept on doing it and doing it. Yep. I'm trying and to the, give it a little movement. So I'm pulling and off then, this little. And then the you know, hens came. And then he's like, oh, that, that time showing off. That's supposed to be me. Yep. So then and then he, he flies, flies down. down. Then he starts kicking the decoy. He just walks right in, didn't he? And then he? he kicked the decoy once, and then he's, like, showing off to the hens. And then he's just staring at me. Yep. Then I'm like, the dad's pull the trigger whenever you're ready. And he made a great shot. We could actually probably show that video. Mm -hmm. I just videoed it on my cell phone. Yeah. But uh, the moral of the story, Jetty, is you've had some pretty awesome experiences, yeah. haven't you? A whole pile of stuff between the, turkeys and deer. The fifth turkey was pretty hard to catch because he there was only one time. He would just walk down the hill. Me and Dad couldn't even see him. It was a steep hill. Yep, they he walk, came off to the right. Then he walked up, but we shot him like do we he that one was aggressive. He kept on kicking the decoys. Like, Dad, you remember when you would shake it and shake it and shake the decoy? Well, he didn't. I don't think he kicked the decoys. He just came in, remember? He just came in and he strutted the whole way. He was the big guy. He yeah. strutted in, he strutted in, he strutted in. And it's a kind of a tricky thing because I, at that t part of the season, I had three de decoys set out. Mm -hmm. I had like a until, until Dad found him on the top of the hill and, she, and then he's like, then he's like do, shaking yep, the I'm turkey. Pull, I'm pulling the string and I'm trying to kind of make a, it was a, it was a, a mounted Jake on a hen. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just it look trying like, them to yeah. go like this, and yeah. then he's and then Dad's trying to make the Tom mad to come over here. And sure enough, there he came. He just came marching right in, didn't he? And then he strutted right at us, but he just Dad did he have his fan up? Yeah, he strutted a few times. Yep, and yeah. then he just came right in. And then I, what did I tell he you? Don't hurt. shoot the decoy. Shoot the blind. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait,
wait. Wait. Okay, you shoot him whenever you're ready, buddy. Go ahead. Done. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you got him. You got him. Yeah, last time <laughs> my the year before my second turkey, yeah. I made some spikes on the decoy. Yeah, so he's peppered the decoys a couple times. There's a whole bunch of BBs on the on the back. Because of the, the that's decoy. because my second turkey kept on kicking the decoy. He was right by that decoy. That one was kicking the decoy bad. Yeah, he was destroyed. Mad, mad. He was mad. He was spurring it, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> yeah. Until that's why. That's why. Spiked the decoy because his head was right here, and then he was ducking down, and then I almost spiked the decoy like by him, so I kind of spiked it. Yeah, yeah. You see metal, like golden metal, like on the decoy. Yep, there's little pieces of, there's little BBs, look yeah. like little gold specks. <laughs> I tried to paint them with a magic marker, it doesn't work. <laughs> They're just, it's just permanently black. Yeah. So I think the next thing I think we should talk a little bit about is, is how. Um, I kind of got you in or got you ready to start hunting. Does that make sense? Yeah. How did you get me ready for hunting? That's a great question, buddy. So I was going round and round on that because I was, he was just chomping at the bit. You know, mm -hmm. he shot two turkeys when he was four, two when he was five, two when he was six. And then he shot a deer last year when he was five. He shot a deer this year when he was six. He turned seven. Actually, tomorrow is your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Yeah. But anyway, so one of the things, and he was, since he was four, he's like, take me hunting, take me hunting. Like, not just take me, I want to shoot something, you know? Like, so, I've been bragging. Yeah. Like, I, like, I go with, dad give me a bow and arrow, and I'm like really excited with it. And I get my sharpest arrow, and I just go in the logs, hunting schools, just yeah. wait to go in the bird feeder. And I, I see this one where I almost shot. I don't know if I told you the story, but... Probably not. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. in like the, the garden... That, like the day that you shot at the turkey and it... Or shot at the squirrel, and it went past the squirrel, and it went on the neighbor's roof, like that day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, tell me this new story that I don't know about. So, I was... Hunting the logs with that, like, turkey, with that red and turkey feather arrow. Yep. And then I was aiming, aiming, aiming until this girl walks in on top of the birdhouse, and he walks down into into there, inside their garden, and I draw my bow back, and then I let go, and then this arrow's, like, this close to him. Whoa. And then I'm like, oh. Yep, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't, right? I just open my eyes and then I point right where the arrow's going. Yep, that's good. Yep, you want to just you want to just look at what you're shooting, right? I kind of tip my arrow up because mm -hmm. if it's a really close shot, I just tip it up because if I aim it two down, it's going to go, like, it's kind of just going to go straight. That's straight down. Yeah, yeah. but I kind of tip it up. Got it. To, or down to make it move. I go down, up, and up, down. Got it. That makes sense. But when I first started getting him into hunting, or when I was going to take him hunting, I actually got on my phone and I started looking at little like shooting apps. There's all these little, there's all these apps that you can get, games that you can get for your for an iPad or your iPhone. And I found a really cool one that was where you would like shoot targets or mm -hmm. little bottles and the bottles will break and it was a red dot and you could switch it. You could make it crosshairs. And so I felt like that was a great way to get him to understand like, okay, we put the dot on the target and you pull the trigger. Right. Or you put the crosshair on the target and you pull the trigger. Cause I think, I think from my perspective, I felt like that was going to be a little bit hard for me to try to explain to him mm -hmm. and then like to put him on the scope or to get him to see it and to understand like, Oh, like, or to shoot something in the, you know, like a BB gun or something. I was like, oh, or a 22, you know, like we live in town. So I understand to shoot a BB gun. Yeah, yeah. So then. Or a gun with a scope off, like my rifle. Yeah. I used to with my rifle. Yeah. But until dad got me a scope on my rifle. Yeah. So then we started using that app, right? The game yep. where you put the dot on the on the bottle and you broke the bottle and the targets. Yeah. Then we did the crosshairs. Yep. And then from there, what I did is, is um, because I think 
I remember as a kid, first deer I shot was with a 12 gauge. I remember shooting the deer, but I also remember the boom. You yeah. know what I mean? And I didn't want to feel like I was going to have that with him. And my brother-in-law, Justin, and I talked a lot about this. So what I ended up doing is I just took him in the yard. This is going to be for turkey hunting. You know, I think that's another great thing. Turkey hunting is a great way to get kids out there. Yeah. yeah you know, it's like, super exciting. I don't like to shoot without like, without like a, without kickstand on it. So yep. I can go like this because yes. if I shoot it with by myself without someone carrying the gun, it's just, just going to draw me back. Like that gun's going to take me back. Mm-hmm. Like, pew, yep. It's going to kick on you, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So then we went in the yard and I just set the gun up on the tripod and then put the red dot on, and then I just put a pop can out in front of us, like 10, 20 yards, 10, 15 yards, and just got them on the gun. And then we really started talking about gun safety, right? Yeah. All about that you never, you always make sure you got that barrel pointed yeah. in the sky, or you never pointed at people. Yeah, we found this video where this guy was not being safe. Yes, yes. And then the other thing we talk a lot about, right, is we never put our finger on the trigger Yeah. until we're going to shoot. That's right? what the guy on the video did. He yep, says so pinky in the your, trigger. Yep, you always keep your finger off that trigger. So when you've got your hand on the gun, you keep your hand, your finger up. You don't put your finger down here, you keep it up, don't you? You can aim it at raccoons or any animals. Yep, if you're hunting, you aim at an animal. But besides that, you always just keep that gun in a safe direction, don't you? So we talked a lot about yeah, like, that. If you're going like squirrel hunting, and you have a gun with a scope, you can aim at a deer, but you don't shoot it. Right, right. Like you can aim at it in the scope, you can just look at it. But you can't shoot it. Right. Okay. Yep. So then we did that. And and literally, I just set him on the gun and I just, we just dry fired it. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time he dry fired, I remember even then he kind of flinched. Yeah. And he kind of looked at me and I remember going, that's it. You know, he could, you could tell he was really surprised. Yeah. And then that's really what we did for a long time. After we started doing that, then what did we talk about? We talked about after you shoot, what do you do? You just be a statue. That's right. Until when, I was already. And then my dad took me on my first turkey hunt with my, with my mom, and then this, and then this, Tom walked in with a beautiful eight fan, and yes. then and then I walk in, and then Dad's like, remember what we practiced? Until so I aim right on the head, and I, pew. yep. I was like, four when that happened. That was a good. We got a video of that too. We could show that, and you did. A, we did a really cool video of mom help video when you recovered it. Buddy, you got one. Look. Yeah. It's dead. Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay, be careful. Hey, hold on a second. Let's make sure it's dead. Look at it. It's dead already. Is it dead? I see some blood, Dad. Come Do on. you see some? Yeah, come on, look. I see some. Do you see some blood on there? Yeah. Is that its head? Look at what right there. Oh yeah, good job. Hey, good. hey, high five. You made a real good shot, bud. Yeah, we shot one. You got one. Yeah, we boomed the gun. We boomed the gun and we shot it, didn't we? Yeah. I made him look that one and then we boomed it. Yes, we did. Geese. There's geese? Oh my goodness. It didn't go anywhere, did Mom it? Mom did. Mom did. Mom did, didn't help that much. She did a good job, though. She came along yeah. and she wanted to be there. Yeah, yeah. but you know, I don't know what it was, but remember that? What, it, what she did, what was wrong? Well, oh, she screamed when, when I was going to shoot. When I was going to... She screamed when I shot the turkey. Yeah, yeah. But no, but so then... We did a lot of that, right? Where I just had him just dry fire the gun yeah. to the point where he could dry fire it and literally he would just pull the trigger and he didn't move a muscle. Yeah. And so, um, and everybody's got a different way of doing it. You know, like, you know, my brother-in-law, Justin, so then that was really what I was going to do. And I was just going to take him hunting knowing that you put the dot on the head and you pull the trigger. And the first time he was really going to shoot the gun was going to be when we were actually hunting. Right. But my brother-in-law, Justin, had the idea of, he's like, hey, just come over. He's got a twenty-two, 
And you know, the nice thing about that is it does make a bang. Yeah. Right. But it doesn't kick worth a nothing. Right. So then that was a nice thing too. We went over to their house and he just practiced kind of putting it all together, getting set up, doing your, you know, going through gun safety and really making sure you're safe. And then when it's time, turning the safety off and putting your finger on the trigger. And then when the gun goes off, you still just don't move. You don't have to flinch. You just be a statue. Yeah. And just really getting him used to that. Because if you just stay still, they won't even notice it was you. Yes. They'll just see it, nothing. Yep. They'll just think you're just something else. Yes. Well, I think, and this is kind of, maybe this is a stretch, but I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of people in the world <laughs> of hunting that deal with target panic. Yeah. I know I struggle with it at times. You know what I mean? Shooting my bow. I am always going through a mantra of how the sequence of a hunt, how I shoot. Because I think since I was a little kid, when guns went off, they kind of scared the daylights out of me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. And like, um, you hear guys that do a lot of long range shooting yeah. with rifles, you know, like target panic can become a real thing. Like you don't realize how much you kind of flinch and things that are happening that you maybe do physically or mentally, like, not on purpose. That yeah. has a video of me. Like, when I shot my third, was that my third or fourth? When you dropped your phone, when you got, like, I think that was my third. And when I shot my 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 third turkey, Dad was, like, screaming. He was like, yeah. I was pretty excited, wasn't yeah. I? I get really excited. Because Wyatt shot one, because Wyatt had, like, Four Tom's walking, and then my dad's, then he got one of them, and then, and then they all walked off. Yes. Until then, I started crying. And then another Tom walked behind us, walked through, and then I shot at him. And then both of us, Dad had a funny video when I went, when I went to my turkey, and, yep. and they all went to Wyatt's. I know they, we all went this way, and Jenny went over to his. <laughs> Yeah. Like, this is all them. Yep. So, Wyatt, and then, so that's three of them. Mm -hmm. And then here's me at the ground blind. Whee! And I'm just saying, Dad, look at the beautiful feathers mm -hmm. on him. Yep. That but they were pretty full out. Yes. That was pretty awesome. The t they didn't run that much. No, they pretty much died right there. Last year, my dad did something funny, and... I shot it until my dad's like, here, Jet, want to try to hear the turkey? And then it, fl it flapped its wings. Yeah, I was doing the crappie flop at the end, and yeah. I knew it was going to do that. So I'm like, hey, why don't you grab that thing? And it started freaking out. <laughs> but I guess the moral of the story of all that but to say is... But you just got to squeeze the head. Yeah. Twist it. Yep. The moral of the story of that is, is that I think for me, I didn't want to establish the you know like or lay the groundwork of what target panic can turn into right as you get older yeah and so i feel like i was just trying to teach jet good fundamentals of what to do and i feel like i can see how that's paying off now yeah because i mean it's crazy i mean i think i get more excited than he does yeah he's just like stone cold in this situation Last right? time even with that deer this year i mean you I saw was him, it was just like he he right when that deer got behind that tree he was like i can't shoot that one yeah. like, you know, he was yeah. just like i'm like Right. What when I shot that button buck and I'm like smoked him. Yep, you did. You said smoked him right away. Yeah. Yep. I yep. was like really calm when I shot that deer. Yeah. Like I was not screaming. Yeah. Do you feel like that when you were a kid? Like, do you, did you ever remember that the gun going off like that or freaking you out kind of? Yeah, a little bit? I did. But it it's different though because I was 12 years old. Yeah, a little bit older. You know, I was yeah. a lot older, so it didn't bother me as bad. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, same thing. It was a 20 gauge, and I actually still use that gun to this day. But yeah. But yeah, it was just kind of a lot different, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just because I'm a little bit older, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Where it doesn't affect you as much. Yeah. Um, so another thing I kind of wanted to talk about too is is equipment. You know, I think youth hunting. Um, I know for me, it's been kind of a, an investment in some different gear that I probably wouldn't usually have. Yeah. You know, um, I'll tell you what. Right off the bat, like I said earlier, youth youth hunting, turkey hunting is a great way to get kids into it. Yeah. Man, that's a great time of year. It's a it's fun and exciting, interactive. Yeah. You can go to you can go to a you can go to a sports shop and get let them pick out a turkey call. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's no right or wrong way to call it a turkey and it's awesome when they gobble back and they start strutting in and gobbling. It's pretty killer. Right. Um, but 
with that said, you know, I find with Jet, a lot of times we hunt a lot in ground blinds. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> yeah, we've hunted a lot in ground blinds in the past in these last couple of years. I, I don't feel super comfortable. Yeah, I never shot in a tree stand. Yep. That yep. was my first time. Yes. Like, never. Yeah, so I don't... He actually... We have a harness. I have a little Hunter Safety Systems youth harness that he yeah. wears. And we have hunted in some ladder stands where he's hunted with me, and I climb up, and he uses the lifeline to get up in there or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um, a lot of the turkey hunting has been in a ground blind. It's just a lot easier because it's a lot easier for movement. Pretty cush. Yeah. Bring a blanket for the floor. Bring a little Mr. Heater. Yeah. Can bring a bag of snacks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you can get away yeah. with a lot. I'll tell you yeah. that the other thing that I use yeah. that I would say tell everybody to go out and look at getting one of these is a bog pod death grip, they yeah. call it. Yeah. It's a U-shaped clamp, like a U-clamp. And man, oh man. What are you doing over there? <laughs> yeah. Jetty really likes the fact that he can see the uh the audio interface and he can see his microphone going up and down. But those bog pot death grips, yeah. to be able to to yeah. put that gut on that death grip and yeah. to really yeah. Yeah. cinch yeah. it down right. and it does not move. Yeah, exactly. It's and it and I'll yeah. tell you what, yeah. there's yeah. a lot yeah. of hey Jetty, there's a lot of variables when you're up there. Yeah. Or when you're in there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like and trying to keep that gun steady is a big part of it. Yeah. And I feel like that that death grip has really become an aid for me because oh, I yeah. can count on that thing where I can just kind of sit off the side and I can loosen Dead. it when I need to mm -hmm. and then let him, once he gets on Dead. it and he's in there, yeah. I can loosen it and then he can control it, Yeah, but it really keeps it steady. Yeah, It's exactly. unbelievable. Yeah. Like my brother-in-law, Justin, got one. He's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that thing's awesome. I mean, they're they are, cool. They're really nice. Yeah, that's one thing that I I never used. I thought of something like that. Yeah. Right. I, I never I used, I never used I was, a tripod ever when I was, was a kid. All freehand the Dead. entire time, except maybe like in a double stand or something with the rail on it. Yes. But for the most part, it was just all freehand. Yes. So. When I first shot my first thing, I felt like, like crazy, crazy. You felt, when I shot my first turkey, I you felt, felt crazy, that, crazy. You felt that adrenaline, didn't you? Yeah, I felt crazy, crazy. You felt like all excited. Yeah, like once you shoot a gun, it kind of just goes like a little bit. Uh -huh. but, on that death grip, it hardly moves. Yeah, it goes like. Yep. yep. And then after you hear that gun go, Pew! yeah, it makes it goes Pew! really fast. And yes. Then you're like, and then you're shaking a lot. Yes. So I think the other thing to talk about too that we're talking about equipment in you know hunting and ground blinds or using that bog pod death grip or other tripods that are out there. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll tell you what. I didn't own a ladder stand. <laughs> yeah. Before this, right? And now I've got a couple, couple double right. stand ladder stands you know yeah. what i mean that like you could put two people and it's got a little bench seat and so i put those in kind of strategic places man they are a pain to set up yeah they are there's nothing easy about them oh yeah but they work really good yeah because i feel pretty comfortable to let him climb up there yeah and you know and just get him in there get him sat down and be good to go yeah um and that that's actually that was his big request this year is I, he just felt like all he was doing was sitting <laughs> <laughs> you got to stop doing that, buddy. It's going to be okay, really okay. hard to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it all in. Yeah. I don't th but here's the funny thing. This is a perfect example. This is youth hunting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. 100%. If you're going out youth hunting and yeah. you think that it's going to be this like incredibly quiet walk in. Yeah. Everything's going to go like you're just normal hunting. It's not like that. Exactly. The number one thing that we do every time we go youth hunting. What is it, Jetty? That to have fun. What? Like to, to get the meat. Yep. And have fun. That's right. And what are where do we where do we always go when we before we go hunting? Go get to, food. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> we go to we go to the gas station and we get whatever food he wants to get. Yeah. Yeah, because it what can be hunting without no food? Like you're gonna stay there for like you're going for who like knows? at nighttime and then you're staying for the next night. Yeah, who knows how long you're gonna be out there? You need chips, you need pop. Like you Tootsie so, rolls. Like in the middle of the night, you're gonna go and leave, and then you're gonna stay for the whole day. You need beef jerky. Yeah, you're gonna need whatever it is. Water. Yeah, you're gonna need whatever. All sorts yeah. of stuff, but the two, but the most important things are we, we're really what we're trying to hunt for is we really hunt because we like to eat it, don't we? Yeah. And number one thing is to have fun. Have fun. That's right. Have yep. fun. Yep. 
But so that's the thing. Like youth hunting isn't like normal hunting. Yeah. You just have to go, you have to roll with the punches. Yeah. And the reality is, is that, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, look at, you were back in Wisconsin yep. just this last weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, Iowa, we're fortunate that the youth season is over a couple weekends. Right. Wisconsin, how many days do you have? Two days. Two days. Yo. <laughs> Jetty, stop. Doing okay. That. Okay. Sit up straight, buddy. Sit up straight. But you only have two days to get it done. Yeah. And so, and you're hunting with your cousin, Charlie. Yep. Cousin Chuck. And, you know, he had a football game Friday night. Yep. Dad, what are we being done? In a little bit, buddy. Yeah. He, uh, he had a football game Friday night. It's actually kind of cool. He's a freshman. Yeah. He's playing on varsity. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of awesome. He's playing right next to his his brother uh, Willie, but um, it's a pretty cool deal. But so he was pretty sore and beat up on Saturday morning, so yeah. he didn't want to get up and go, which I totally understand. So we got out Saturday night and uh, we had a great hunt. I mean, we saw there was deer out in the field when we were setting up, even, um, and uh, just all throughout the night they just kept filtering out, filtering out. But we just never quite had one come into range. Yeah. Um, well, we had them in range, but. Uh, where we were set up there, we're kind of right on the um, the property edge. Mm-hmm. We have permission to shoot into the neighbors, but we didn't just out of respect. We don't um, we don't clear any lanes out and whatnot. You know, just yeah. kind of out of respect. But if there's a um, if there's a chance that we can shoot out there, I mean, we will. But but they just kind of stayed in the neighbors for the mo- most part, and then uh, and yeah, so we just didn't get an opportunity. But like I said, it was just a fun fun night, just sitting with Charlie and yep. hanging out and being uh, out there. Yeah, and so then we got up early Sunday morning, saw a couple of does, but same thing. They just didn't really read the script like they were supposed to. They came in right behind the blind, but it was really fun. Sat up there with Uncle Zip and Charlie. So yeah, but yeah, it was a great weekend of hunting, and it was awesome to be home. I have been home very much, so it was great to spend time with the family, and yeah, that's the most important thing I think. Mm-hmm. So, well, I think that's the other thing too. We talk about when it comes. We talk about equipment is the weapons. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Like, like for a youth season in Iowa, we only, before we could only shoot 20 gauges. Yeah. We just passed a law this last year that yeah. now you can use four tens. Yeah. So I got a, actually from Jason Mears, told me about this. There's a gun called the Rossi Tuffy Turkey. Yeah. And it's a little single shot 410. And that thing is awesome. Mm-hmm. And those little 410 shells, they look smaller than a thing of chapstick. Yeah. They're like the size of your pinky finger. They're so bizarre. Right. You're like, this is not going to work. Yeah. And with this new tungsten uh, shot. This, you're, you're talking turkey hunting? Yeah, turkey okay. hunting. Yep. Apex tungsten yep. uh, turkey shot that I got. And I put a different little choke on the end of it. And you want to talk about a killer. That thing yeah. is just <laughs> wicked. Yeah. You can shoot far. Yeah. And it thing packs a punch. So, and it doesn't kick worth nothing. Great for youth, but really, it'd be a great gun for anybody. To yes, use, yeah. And like I said before that, we just use a little youth twenty gauge that my neighbor Jerry let us borrow. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then that's the other thing too with um, with deer seasons now, um, Iowa legalized these straight wall cartridges. Yeah. And so, um, Jetty, what did you get for Christmas last year? Playful. Yep, you got a Henry lever action forty four mag. Yeah. So the cool thing about those lever actions, those Henry lever actions, he can shoot it as a six-year-old, and I can shoot it as a 39-year-old. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy. It's a gun that he can really grow with his whole life yeah. and shoot. And uh, That's what I shot my that's what I shot my second deer with. Yep, so you shot your deer last year with Justin's lever action. Yeah. Yeah, he has the same thing. He has a yeah. 44 mag. So we honestly kind of have about almost ident- – gun set up almost identical. Yeah. And this year we got one, and – Got a scope, a loophole scope on it, and uh, a three to ten. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And like we went out to a piece of public land and sighted it in. Uh, yeah. It's not a two hundred yard gun. No. Right. It's a hundred yard gun. Right. But man, it, you can really dig them in there. It's a fun gun. Oh. I had a lot. I'm not too into guns at all, but it was yeah. really fun shooting that thing. I had a blast. Man, it was fun. Yeah. It yeah. Was cool. That, that was fun. Yeah, Chuck was shooting a six five Creed Mar. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's the just thing. crazy how different it is. I know. And that, yeah. <laughs> And I, it make like, you and I don't know if this is true or not. You hear a lot of people say the reasons they don't let a lot of rifle hunting, and I was, like, you think about during the shotgun seasons if they let rifles and how flat a good yeah, chunk. So, that's the one thing that I think tr- that's the biggest difference between Wisconsin and Iowa. It's just the terrain is so different. Yes, it's just so flat here. And yeah. if you let 
a lot of all those gun seasons into rifle seasons. Yeah, exactly. It would just be yiska. One, it wouldn't be safe, and two, I mean, the numbers of deer being killed would go way up because oh, you can shoot forever. <laughs> yeah, know? that's exactly right. So. Well, and you hear some of these guys that are shooting these lever actions farther mm-hmm. than a hundred yards. You know, yeah. like a, whether it's a three fifty seven or yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, you hear guys that are shooting them farther. Right. Like I said, I feel like a hundred yards is a pretty good even number for oh, what he's per- trying yeah, to do. Perfect. But I think, like we said, and I'm kind of we're kind of jumping around a yeah. bit here. But to go back to what you said just a bit ago, a minute ago about hunting with Charlie, yeah, and hunting with your family and hunting with Jet and yeah. him hunting with his cousins, I think that the number one thing that we just keep coming back to when we go is we're really just trying to have fun, yeah. Because yeah. I think that's what we want to establish most yeah. of all is is you know, you know, we've even said this. We said this when we were in Idaho. You know, Jetty, the mantra that I'll tell Jetty if we if we're walking back to the truck and we don't get one, what do I say? Sometimes you sometimes you get, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Yeah. And that's the reality. That's hunting. Yeah. You know, you want to try to put yourself in the best position to get one. Yeah. But the reality is, is especially I don't know, makes me sound like I'm standing on my soapbox, but this day and age and like instant gratification, instant I want it now, you yeah. know what I mean, type thing. I think that's what I've had to work through with Jed is like, hey, we're not always going to get one. Yeah. And sometimes we do, and we have been. He's been pretty successful. Yeah. But last year, we went out youth hunting a ton of times and just couldn't get it to come together. And then what did I do that one day? I forgot the ground blind. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that. Wyatt knew that because right when we left the house, he said, Jed, we forgot the brown blind. Yeah, so I forgot the ground blind, so that worked out real good. <laughs> so and then we <laughs> had to... got all the way out there, and I'm like, Awesome. Yeah. So and then and then Wyatt and Justin had to sit in the tree stand without a gun and then me and Dad were sitting on a chair, two chairs with, with a ghillie net. With a ghillie net and with the tripod standing right in front of us with with only a tree and leaves on us. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite the deal. Yeah. But yeah, the most important thing is just to have fun. Right. Definitely. You know, it's just to try to have fun. Yep. I'll tell you, one of the things that I went round and round about when I was going to take jet deer hunting, especially last year for the first time, was, um, and I've talked about this before, if I was or was not going to take an Ozonix with me. Yeah. And I actually didn't take Ozonix with me right. all of last season. Jetty, <laughs> don't rub your face on this thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. I did not bring an Ozonix with me. And... Um, part of the reason for that is, and honestly, maybe it, it came back to the way my grandpa taught me to hunt as a kid. Um, when we used to go hunting, he used to take me rabbit hunting a lot, and he gave me a bottle of Windicator. And I've told the story before, but I would, uh, that would be what I was in charge of. I got to puff the Windicator. Mm-hmm. And so he would, you know, give me the cue, and I would step up and puff the Windicator. And he would always ask me, what does that mean? And I would say, that's where the line was. And the line was, Whichever way the windicator went, that was where if that deer got past that line, it was going to wind us. Right. Because that's what always happened. You know, and I remember seeing deer walk in or, you know, and then just blow out. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, I grew up with that line. Yeah. And I learned that the line was an immovable force. That was just the way it was. You know, I set tree stands based on the line. I hunted based on the line. Right. That's the way that... It worked. Yeah. yeah. And part of my whole thing with Jet was is I wanted him to experience that line too. And I wanted yeah. him to experience having a deer walk in and just completely turn inside out and blow up and have him look at me and be like, well, what just happened? Yeah. And just understand what that meant. Because I think it's important to hunt with that type of respect for the wind. Oh, exactly. I think there could be a whole generation of hunters that don't have that much respect for right. the wind. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? hundred percent. That are hunting with their dads that yeah. have used those onyx and are seeing it work and are getting deer on the down one side. Yeah. And so um, last year I didn't bring one. Yeah. Um, I really wanted him to see it. And we did. Like it, it happened where yeah. we had deer cock in and I just tried to stay quiet and, you know, watched him wind us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just tried to help him understand, okay, buddy, this is what the line is. Right. And this is how we have to hunt. And we, the, Okay, which is the downwind side? Which is the upwind mm-hmm. side? You know, and explaining that and having him puff the wind indicator. Yeah. Now, this year, we brought our HR 500s. Right. Um, now, did it entirely make the difference on that hunt? Not the way the deer walked in? Right. You know what I mean? Um, but like I said, I was out a couple other days with Jet where 
yeah, I think it did make the difference. Right. You know what I mean? But but yeah, like I said, I just think that's an interesting thing. And I think when we talk about youth hunting again, and we go back to what we talked about earlier with equipment, man, for me, when I used to guide in Colorado, what Ozonics meant was it helped me get clients more opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I feel like an Ozonics helps you get more opportunity. So if you can put an Ozonics above your head when you're youth hunting and you can help your little guy or little girl get more opportunity, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Maximize that opportunity. Give yourself the best chance you possibly can right. to get a shot. Right, exactly. Because deer don't always come in on the upwind side. No. Yeah. You know, like he wants to get out there and rattle, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> like the one day we let him rattle just for the yeah. heck of it, just because it's fun. Yeah. But um, be done. we're almost done, buddy. Jetty is done with the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he said his piece. Yeah. But yeah, so I think that's a I'm big thing. I'm stuck in this chair. I know, one second. But that's the big thing I would say is, is man, like think about using your ozonics when you're youth hunting. Yeah. It just, again, it can help you give you more opportunity. When you get deer on that down one side, it can make all the difference. Yeah. Um, I think we hear that. I mean, Dude, you saw you saw all the dads with their kids, right? Grandpas with their grandsons come up at the consumer shows, yeah, right. Like, what did that one kid say? And Ozonics is worth its weight in gold. He goes, "It's worth its weight in blood." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was so killer. That was hilarious. that was the best. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, so I just think you can really, really make a heck of a difference. Oh yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. So. One thing that I just kind of thought about right there when you were talking about, you know, teaching Jet, like what happens when they uh, go downwind and stuff like that. Yeah. That's kind of the thing that um, I've been thinking about a lot this year, you know, like with taking him out because I've never experienced taking a kid out this young. Yeah. And I just look back to, um, you know, kind of my experiences growing up and uh, I'm kind of 50, I'm kind of 50, 50 on letting kids go so young or waiting till they're 12. Because for me, my experience was, yeah, I was hunting when I was, you know, six years old, but I had no chance to shoot. But I learned a lot of great lessons throughout there. I feel like there's a lot of people who let their kids go who they're just out there just pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's not you because yeah. I know Jet's obsessed with every single aspect <laughs> of hunting. He comes yeah. out with us when we're setting tree stands and stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah. But so it's just interesting. It's like it's great to get them out there. But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of valuable lessons that should still be taught when it comes to hunting, like exactly what you just said, not taking the Ozonics. Yes. I think that's so important. It's so huge to teach them because that's a huge part of hunting yep. is understanding the wind, understanding what deer will do when they smell you. Like it's all just, so I commend you for doing that. Cause that's, I think that's a really cool thing to do just to take that extra step to make sure that they actually learn while they're out there. Well, and I'll tell you what, I think one of the things that I think this is very applicable to youth hunting I think it's very applicable to adult hunting. Yeah. It's called hunting, yeah, not exactly. shooting. Exactly. 100%. Listen, if you want to go shooting, then go to a target range or yeah. go to a high fence. Yep. But this is hunting. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is yeah. hunting. And, Jetty, what's one of the big things that we always have to talk about? You crying. Right, because you yeah. cry. Oh man, we'll go out there. <laughs> he doesn't get one. The turkeys go the other way, and then there's Mr. Ball Bags. How many turkeys <laughs> have I shot? Yeah, but how many have walked away? And then you cry and cry and cry and cry, and it's like, and it's funny because that's how he internalizes it, and that's how he then works through it. Right? You and I kind I... of pout and complain. Yeah, exactly. you remember when you missed that big ten pointer? And I didn't cry. That's like a huge buck, and I didn't even cry about it. That's true. Okay, so I usually cry about. Like, I thought I I thought I hit but it, but then I missed it. Oh, it comes <laughs> to find out I hit it. So we already went through that. But yeah. yes, but yeah. yeah, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like it's called hunting, not shooting. Yeah, exactly. And I think that you're you're hitting the nail on the head there because I, it's funny. I never even really thought about that, but yeah. I think there are a lot of, you know, moms and dads that maybe get their kids out there hunting, and then yeah. they end up just kind of like. Yeah, just the kid just pulls the trigger and that's yeah, it. Yeah, and I just think it's got to be more than that. Yeah, exactly. Like even if I mean, obviously, like when we're out setting tree stands and stuff like that, like yeah. obviously we're setting it and kind of doing it, but at least he's there understanding like what goes into it. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I think that's just it's huge to be able to incorporate that in the youth hunting, and that's where you know I was able to do that with my dad, just going with him and hunting and seeing deer and yep. how to act when there's deer in front, what they do, and all that. So yep. 
what angles to shoot them at, what angles yeah, not to exactly. shoot them at, explaining where their vitals are, exactly. explaining what's an ethical shot, yep. understanding how to blood trail, yep. Yep. understanding exactly. even how where deer, where they bet at, <laughs> where they go and feed at. Right. You know, and just trying to just, just again, make it more than just about the shot. Exactly. Because it is, I mean, the shot is really, really oh, fun. It's a, that's the, obviously that's the pinnacle of it, yep. but, but again, there's like, a lot to get to that pinnacle. Absolutely. And I think, like I said, I think the drum that I beat over and over and over is, we're out there to have fun. Yep, exactly. You know, we're out there to have fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. So, well, I think we wrap it up. Jenny, if I if we keep you on here any longer, you're probably going to start, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> you're going to go crazy. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. I appreciate it, buddy. You did a good job, buddy. It's a massage chair. Is that a massage? Oh, that that's what he's talking uh, about. That thing has got a massager on it. Because it's a, this, that? It's Susie's. Here, here's the funny thing. So I go in there, I'm like, hey, do you have a pillow he can sit on? She... Hold on a second. Keep your headphone on. I said, hey, do you got a pillow he can sit on? He's like, she's like, no. Well, I see this little massage thing. It's for her back. And she said, well, I don't want you to sit on that. I want your butt smell on there. I said, it's for Jet. I go, it's right by your lower back. What's the difference between your lower back and your butt? But here, come find out. It's got a massager thing. So that's what what you're talking about. (laughs) That's why he's sitting over there almost falling asleep. (laughs) Oh, But hey, buddy. I love you very much, and I'm really glad that you came on the podcast. And I'll You're tell you welcome. what, I really enjoy hunting with you, man. I'm so <laughs> I enjoy hunting with you. And you know what? Thank you. I think that I think that Nick has enjoyed hunting with you too. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Can you hear that? <laughs> yes, you <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> it was on my butt. That was on his butt. <laughs> you can you hear that? <laughs> That's on Jet's butt. <laughs> so yeah, Jet's having a good old time. But hey, buddy, thanks for coming on. Congratulations on your second deer. You're welcome. That's pretty exciting. Thank you. Hey, good job. Tell Nick thanks. Thanks. You bet, buddy. Thanks for coming on. All right. That's another podcast in the books. Ozonics Killer Wins Podcast. I'm Cole Tanner. I'm Nick Simon. We got Jet Kodiak with us today. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Have a good day. See you next week. Take it easy. <laughs>